Uh, good morning. My name is Bashir Fancy, and I'm here on behalf of BT PAC Business, uh, BizTech Professionals Association of Canada, that we launched recently, part of ICCP. I am very fortunate today that I have a very special guest with us, uh, Milos Koshit of Edward Jones, that you uh, will see in a second. Uh, in fact, he's on the right of your screen at the bottom, but he'll be in the center in a second. Uh, and the reason for that is that um, you know, there's been turmoil in the marketplace in many different places. We're working from home. Um, people's life savings, RSP, are getting hit. So we're not here to sell you anything or to give advice on, on, on what investing you do. However, Edward Jones, uh, in this, uh, and in particular, actually, Milos is here to talk about what is going on so he can answer some of your questions and explain that to you. So with that, let me welcome Milos. Good morning, Bashir. Thank you so much for having me and uh, looking forward to answering the questions. So as I sa said, uh, this is Bistec Professional Association of Canada, a BT PAC, and um, we're part of ICCP, and then Milos is the advisor at... Uh, Edward Jones, a very uh, sensible person, very, very grounded. So he can take it from here. No problem, Bashir. Well, first of all, thank you for creating the BizTech uh, organization. I think it's going to help a lot of uh, professionals in the different industries. Uh, if you, to be honest with you, if we didn't have technology today, we wouldn't be able to talk to our clients, uh, you know, including my assistants in the office and uh, myself. Uh, physically, we cannot meet people. So uh, we now need technology more than ever to function just uh, as, a, uh, as a bare minimum to be able to see our clients, do WebEx, do uh, different, uh, different meetings. And uh, again, technology Technology is probably the most important part of our society right now. So while Bashir is bringing the slides, so I just wanted to uh, touch base. There's a couple of things that uh, uh, you know that I wanted to share with everybody. Um, as uh, as the office, uh, um, you know, in Miss Saga, with uh, with a lot of clients that have questions daily, pretty much about what's happening with the markets, um, what's happening with the. Uh, uh, you know, with uh, with uh, the stock market, bond market, with uh, our retirement planning, what's happening with uh, uh, you know with RSPs. Um, so I'm here today just to answer some some basic questions about uh, what's happening and uh, what can we look forward to, uh, knowing that everything is on standstill. Um, so one of the most important thing that people always overlook when something happens dramatically in the market is what is my long term goal? What is that I'm, I'm trying to achieve? Uh, you know, through planning. And uh, a lot of times people neglect their goals to focus on a short term uh, environment and what's happening in the markets. Uh, it's called, um, there is a slide um, that I wanted to, to share with you. Um, it's called market cycle of emotions and how people react to different uh, uh, market environments. Uh, so we have uh, a lot of things happen. If you see euphoria, it's probably by the end of, uh, you know, in the beginning of this year and the end of last year, uh, where people are very excited about markets. Markets were all time high. Um, a lot of good news were coming from uh, from unemployment, uh, the lowest of all, all time in the United States. Canada was doing great. And, uh, you know, uh, all of a sudden this virus happens. Uh, and then the, what happens, the markets start dropping. Um, and people start neglecting their long-term uh, long-term goals and focusing or short-term goals or any goals that they have um, and uh, focusing on just, uh, you know, the losses that are occurring on the market. So I want to show the slide where it says, this is great, I should invest more, which is probably by the end of last year. Um, and then once everything started, bad news coming from China, people moved to, uh, uh, you know, the market started dropping and then there is spread in Italy, spread around the world. Um, it says it's okay. I'm a long-term investor. I can, I can, you know, deal with this. And then there is a point in a, in a portfolio where people start, uh, you know, feeling fear and saying, "Oh, I don't know. Maybe this time is different. Uh, maybe I should, uh, maybe the, you know, maybe I should surrender." Which is on the bottom screen and say, "Okay, let me get out of this and uh, you know, wait to see what's going to happen, and then enter the market again." So, uh, when that happens, there is a lot of times people make mistake and uh, trying to time the market. Uh, which I strongly uh, advise against it. You should spend more time in the market, not timing the market. That way will crystallize of what the performance or, uh, that your long-term goal needs. 
um, to achieve. Um, and that way you can stay, uh, you can stay focused, uh, uh, you know, on a goal oriented investing. Um, so, uh, once everything reaches the bottom, people start feeling a little bit more optimism and started, you know, either, um, you know, hopefully we will see that coming soon as we're all cramped up in the houses with the children. Um, there is a lot of uncertainties around if the kids will go back to school, when is this all going to end, when are we going to get our jobs back? So there's a lot of uncertainties So people don't want to make, you know, a lot of decisions and they're trying to save the vital organs pretty much. And hopefully, uh, you know, this will get back to normal. Um, and, uh, what I would advise, um, um, you know, and everybody in this kind of environment to, to think with their clear head and focus on, uh, uh, you know, on the long-term goals. And there is another thing that is very, very important now is the next slide, which is about budgeting. So when environment comes where people are uh, looking at, uh, you know, uh, pretty much the bare essentials, uh, I've shared with you guys monthly spending plan worksheet uh, that you guys can, you know, Bashir, you can share it uh, with people. They can sure. see it and, um, you know, they can start uh, you know, budgeting to see what's the most important things and how much will cost them a month. Um, think about those of your household as a small corporation. Uh, you know, you have income coming, you have expenses coming. So, well, the budgeting is the, the most vital thing right now when the markets are where they are. Um, so I would like to just share, um, you know, if you guys can spend a couple of minutes uh, uh, with your family and, you know, put all the expenses on a paper, see how much income is coming and uh, what are some of the miscellaneous things and things that you can actually improve and try to uh, to incorporate in your budget or try to cut some of the expenses that are unnecessary in this moment. Um, so that's pretty much bottom line what I wanted to share with you. Um, is there any questions that you might have uh, that you think it will benefit the, the viewers? It's what you have in the budget, <clears throat> which I do understand, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, is that the budgeting, there are two parts there, you've got necessary and discretionary. So you got the incomes, as you quite rightly point out, and you know the amount of taxes you pay, and then what net you got. So if that includes your housing, mortgage, uh, utilities, uh, other necessities, insurance, um, and so forth, and any loans. So now at the end of the day, you left with some money. Now, if I understood you correctly, what you're saying, you're saying when you invest the money, you keep some uh, into liquid type. Uh, asset which is savings account or bond that's cashable or whatever so you don't get stuck into a situation where you need the money tomorrow if you need the money tomorrow you don't have the money to invest you can absolutely save, right mm -hmm. you you, yeah. you have savings account you have got it uh, a tangerine or whatever and you're getting three percent because the other thing i heard and i'm trying to recap is that when you do this budget right you understand exactly what your needs are, right? Because you, you understand that my needs are so many dollars a month and my needs in 10 years, 20 years are going to be X number of dollars a month. Uh, you will look at your Canada pension plan and other pensions that you might get from the company, um, which, uh, you know, depending on if you continue to work there, that the industry is safe and the company you're working for is safe. Uh, otherwise, you have to make uh, sure that you're making plans that has a backup plan. So this budgeting then becomes very critical. Too many people are going from hand to mouth, not necessarily their fault. If there is uh, uh, things expensive uh, or they're not getting paid uh, well or whatever, it's difficult. But nevertheless, you have you can only play with the cards you have in your hand. So what you just Absolutely. said, right? So what you explain this becomes very important. The Absolutely. Uh, uh, and that is this, by the way, is true of a company like you you pointed out that operate like a, a corporation is because a, in a company also does the planning and budgeting. Otherwise, they'll go bankrupt because you can't spend money you don't have. So that was very interesting. Now, yeah, if, so, right, go ahead. Yeah. So I'm just uh, wanted to add about the, the budgeting as well. I, you know, always advising my clients to keep about three to six months of their expenses aside. So, um, you know, if you're spending, let's say $3,000 a month, you know, for next, uh, you know, for next three to six months, that's the amount of money that you should have put aside in a, in a, in a you know, in a cash account or in a some savings account, uh, whichever you like. That way, when things like this happen, you don't have to be selling your investments that are for your long-term goals 
to be able to you know to uh, finance your short term needs so it's always good to have extra extra uh, uh, money put aside so you can actually go through this uh, you know and not not uh, jeopardize your long term plans and to do this the first thing you do is pretty much just what we talked about is budgeting uh, you know incorporate in your budget a couple of hundred dollars a month uh, in the future that you're going to be saving towards god forbid or the days that they came uh, you know, it just happened to us. Um, so uh, three things from this meeting pretty much is, you know, uh, market volatility, stay focused on your long-term goals. Uh, second thing is budgeting. See what's the most important expenses you need to, to focus on right now to keep your family and your household in order and uh, cut unnecessary expenses, which now we have no problem with that because there's not much we can do now. You can't go for a dinner or anything like that. So this can actually be a very positive thing. So to work on your budgeting, and uh, and you know um, it's probably uh, more than ever is now important to understand where your uh, financial uh, you know your household financial health is. Um, so um, you know if if there is anything else that you would like me to share, Bashir. So, um, so I've yeah. got the slide on the screen where we talked about is it just the market or how people are reacting is contributing. In you just explain that the emotions, that's why this presentation is about emotional resilience, which is to right. kind of basically say, don't react emotionally, go with facts, right? And always do facts. This is true of business and technology. That's why this is so important that when you behave in a certain way, whether you're in the office in technology or they're in business, you don't change it because when you're investing, you continue to operate the same way, which, which means get the information, get the facts, and then look at now. There's a couple of examples I wanted to ask. And so uh, the market, so I go invest in, 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 a, in, in a bond. Now, the maturity date is uh, two years from now, three years from now, four years from now, and I know it's a reliable company. It, right. it, the market value will drop. Uh, like what's going on right now, I even personally hold investment that was taken a, a buck. But even things that should not be impacted are impacted in terms of the valuation. But it only becomes a, a loss if I go sell it. If I hang on to it, I will continue to get my dividends. And when it matures in two, three years' time, I'll get my full money back. Because yeah, and that's, good, right? that's so, exactly what I was talking about when I said. Uh, you know, if uh, budgeting and having three to six months of your available assets uh, for you to keep you keep you afloat during this time, so you don't have to be selling investments in a wrong time, which is right now. A lot of people are fear fearful what's going to happen, and let me liquidate it, go in cash, and decided to um, you know to go into uh, you know time the market and let's wait until everything is passed, and then I'm going to get into the markets. Or I need to sell that bond that you just talked about to fund my to fund my expenses for next three four months. So there is a lot of planning, and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of planning, and I can say a lot of uh, discipline is involved in investing and planning. Um, a lot of people start it and they don't keep to their goals and in the long term. So my uh, what I would advise to that is when you're holding up very good quality companies in your portfolios, uh, you have nothing to worry about if you review it with your advisor and you see, okay, this is what we hold and this is the companies that we hold in our portfolios and what we think is going to happen to those companies. That, that way you kind of understand what you have in your portfolio so you don't panic more than if you hold something that you're not really sure about what's happening. So that can also help uh, help uh, keep you at ease uh, of what's happening uh, around you so you don't make irrational decisions. Um, that's another point that we can add to this uh, to this slide of uh, being in a fear and surrendering your investments in the wrong time. So, so, the, so the last part, because we're going to invite uh, members out there, uh, people watching this to send in their questions and We'll get you back to answer very specific questions at the moment. It's a very high level general thing. But um, one of the other things was that trouble starts uh, in anything, in, in a business, in technology, in investing. Is If you have know your needs and then you go invest on those bases and like you said, keep six months at least available so you can go to that cash in order to sell yours. Because I know a couple of people who told me and I was shocked that they sold their shares, uh, whatever investment they were holding, 
in order to be able to get their groceries and stuff in, in, the, la- in the last couple of weeks that I'm talking about. And that uh-huh. was quite upsetting to me in that uh, I know these people, are, they're very good people, and, uh, but what had happened is they invested, so I asked them, I'm not a, a financial broker, a finance guy for sure, but not, so I asked them, and they said they invested because they thought they were going to get 14% and 15%, and I was quite uh, surprised at the person who said that to me, which means greed got them to make a bad decision. Uh, so in this case, it was not emotional, but it was the greed. And so yeah. when they do that and they don't have the capability to, to hold on, so again, it comes back to your budgets, right, that you talked about. Is, uh, uh, right, B is, is very disciplined about your budget, so you don't invest money if you don't have that thing. Keep it in, in cash so you can do that. But I, I think that is some very good uh, advice, basically, in that, A, what is happening in the market. So the market is going down because people are fearful. Companies are closed at the moment, right? Nobody's working. People have been laid off. Um, and so if you're an airline, for example, you would, uh, would have taken a fairly hefty loss. I don't think people have seen that because uh, it will materialize as people will see it in the next quarter, right? Uh, Absolutely. And uh, when you have the economy like like this, where pretty much everything is stand still, uh, you know, you a lot of times people get caught up in choosing big, big winners, right? It's very hard to choose uh, who will get out of this, uh, you know, unarmed. I think everybody will struggle to get out of this. Uh, but that's why it's important to have diversified portfolios in different industries. Um, you know, that way you don't have to take uh, unnecessary risk into one industry. You can have, you know, would you would I rather have 10 companies in, in, in five different industries or have 10 companies in one industry? Obviously, I would choose more industries. That way, we don't know which one might come out faster out of this recession that is uh, most likely to happen. So, you know, there's lots to, lots to consider. Uh, I would say say my number one priority that I would that I share with my clients and I share with the people around me is just start budgeting for your family. You can use that simple a simple one pager that I sent um, uh, to you that you can present it to the, to the to your members and just say, you know what, guys, just print this out, make a simple budget about your family and, you know, start seeing what what's the most important and what is not and uh, start from there. So thanks very much, Milos. What we will do Probably. is I, I, I will send that out to people. So just to end this, basically, and the purpose of doing, doing this thing is so that there's no confusion. We're not telling you from BT Pack or myself or anybody is to go invest here or there or whatever. Just giving you the lay of land of what is happening in the marketplace. And we are here to answer some of your questions. We can help you because we believe Everything translates, discipline, uh, budgeting, planning, execution, whether your business, whether your technology, just like uh, Milos explained, you don't run around and buy a technology because everybody else is buying it, right? You do it because that is something you need and Absolutely. you have thought through. So we will bring him back uh, to answer your questions. Now, his number is on the thing also on the slide that you will see. And and I really ask our members to... to um, if there's any questions, send it and we get any of your questions answered. Of course, we're going to answer your technology and business questions. This we thought was relevant given what is going on right now. And a lot of people are panicking about what is happening. Will they have money left? So this is what general high level uh, saying that if you hang tight, you know, hopefully things, good things will happen. Um, but we may be new normal. So thanks. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Milo. Thank you, Basir, for having me. And uh, one last sentence I would say: I would say to people, own a very good quality investments, and uh, stay long-term investing, and, and, and work on your budget. <laughs> and, and and don't uh, don't take too many risks when you don't have to, right? Uh, Absolutely, because it's greed that gets you into trouble. So I appreciate Absolutely. that very much, Milo. We'll be so much for having me. My pleasure. Thank you. Okay. All the best.